what is up you guys this is Cormat here today I'm coming at you with a basic video this time it's going to be about sidechain compressing certain frequencies now uh, this is an FL studio specific tutorial because uh, I actually did try Ableton and I cannot find an alternative in Ableton that was as easy as this um, because F Ableton does not have something as awesome as fruity peak controller which I do think is a, is a very underrated FL Studio plugin and it should be used more. Now, here's why I think that's so. Well, uh, Fruity P controller, for one thing, it is a side chain, it is a side chain compression controller. It can, it, you slap it onto an insert and it turns whatever audio is coming into that insert into controller data. Now, allow me to demonstrate why this is important. Uh, so first we have the kick drum EQ right here and we have the uh, the arpeggiator EQ right here this one actually so let's go ahead and play them together right now there is no side chaining going on whatsoever but if we wanted to side chain the arpeggiator I can go ahead and slap on a limiter right here and just However, some of us might not want that effect. We do. We might not want the entire, the entire arpeggiator ducking out as the kick drum is coming in. We just might want the, the important frequencies like the sub bass. Um, so if we want the sub bass of the kick drum to come in, while, while the uh, arpeggiator is still clean, we might just want to duck certain frequencies. And this is where fruity peak controller is important. So what I have right here is a peak controller right here. Remember, peak controller turns incoming audio into controller data. So what I, could, what I can do is I can turn peak controller on. And OK, so this is where it starts. Well, this is where it starts off. But if you, but what you can do is you can right click right here. This is where it starts off, by the way. Uh, right click right there, link to controller. Uh, in, click internal controller, the drop down, and then hit peak controller peak right here and then hit accept. And then let's see what happens when you hit play. Now, whenever the kick drum is coming in, it, it'll boost the volume all the way up and then it'll go back down. Now, why is that? Well, that's because your bass, your bass volume right here, your bass peak is at zero, which means it'll bring whatever knob it's linked to down to zero. Now, how do we bypass this? Well, easy. We just right click here, type in value, and type in 50. There we go. And it's brought back to the default position because the default position on this fader is 50. Now, let's hit play again to see what happens. Now, we notice that the, every single time the kick drum hits, the volume is going up. So, how do we stop that? Well, we tweak the volume knob right here. If you go to the right, if you tweak it to the right, it adds volume every single time the controller data detects incoming volume from the kick drum. And then we go l left, and then that will mean that the peak controller will, will duck the volume of the fader just based on the incoming audio of the kick drum. So let's see what it looks like now. Okay. Now that we have that fixed, you'll notice that it's actually coming back a little bit too fast for my taste. So I'm going to tweak the decay right there. And there we go. Now that is basically P controller in a nutshell. A couple of things to remember about using P controller. For one, make sure that mute is not on. So, so when you play it with mute on, it'll basically mute the volume of the insert that it's on. But it will still perform the controller. It will still perform the ducking. So make sure that mute is not on if you want the kick drum to come in. And the another the other important thing about peak controller is that you want to put it on the insert 
of the of of the track that's that contains the kick drum or of the track that contains the audio that you want things to be side chained to so so that's why i have it right here on insert one which is my kick drum you you see fruity p control right here so it's basically detecting the, the audio of the kick drum and let's turn off the arpeggiate and then let's turn off the limiter it actually makes a huge difference when mixing but yeah be sure to keep the peak controller on the kick drum because you want the peak controller to detect the kick drum audio and then translate it to the controller data of everything else anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys like this video be sure to like comment down below of future videos that you want to see and as always you guys have a nice day oh one more thing i will be live streaming after i upload this video so if you guys want to stick around for that please go ahead and check that out thanks very much you guys